Welcome everybody. Thanks very much for joining us. Uh, today's webinar is one of a series that the RTA will be delivering on upcoming tenancy law changes. The topic we will be covering today is on ending a tenancy. My name is Mark Fidler and I am joined today by Lynn Smith, our Senior Community Education Officer, who will step us through the new changes. Hi everyone. Before we start this morning, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we are holding today's webinar and where you are joining us from and pay respect to elders past, present and emerging. Today, we'll provide detailed information regarding the topics you see on your screen with a focus on the new grounds to end a tenancy that will come into play as of 1 October 2022. We will look at how these new grounds apply to landlords, agents and tenants in ending a tenancy once these changes come into effect. Once we've got through that information, we will run through a few scenarios to provide some practical examples of how these changes are going to work and look to answer any questions you may have. I'd like to point out that we had over 600 people registered for today's session. and We may not get to all your questions, but rest assured the RTA has a lot of information being released over the coming weeks that will help everyone in the rental sector understand these new changes. We will show you how you can submit your questions in a moment. Today, we would like to hear from you. As mentioned, we will have a Q&A session this morning before we finish the webinar. We'd love to receive your questions and for you to submit them, please click on the chat function or speech bubble in your Zoom toolbar. Or if you can't see it, click on the more and look for chat there. We'd also like to hear from you on how today's session went, as well as any future topics that you'd like to know more about. So please look out for a survey when our webinar closes. To start us off today, I'd like to get an understanding of you, our audience. I'm about to launch a short poll where we're looking to see where you are today and also which group in the rental sector you belong to. So if you could answer those questions for us, I'll give a few minutes to do so. And in the, um, while you're doing that, we would like to make a big shout out to all of our attendees right across Queensland, from both regional and rural areas, and those in Brisbane that are joining us. We're getting plenty of results coming in. And it does look like we have a large percentage of property managers and agents, uh, around 60% at this stage, and around 25% of property owners and landlords. Uh, we've got some beauty housing support workers. Um, so yeah, thank you very much. I'll leave that up for a couple more seconds just to give us uh, the details. All right, so what I'll do now is hand over to Lynn. So as I said, um, about 60% of you on the line today are property managers or agents, about 25% property owners or landlords and a mix uh, of tenants and residents, community housing workers, rooming accommodation providers or park managers, and a few others as well. So Lynn, I'll hand over to you now and we can get things rolling. Great, thanks Mark and um, good morning everybody. So I'll just swap over the screens here. So just quickly just start on the rental reforms. So the Housing Legislation Amendment Act was passed in October last year and that amends the Residential Tenancies and Rooming Accommodation Act 2008. That's the Queensland Tenancy Laws. There are four key areas in these amendments. Um, domestic and family violence protections which are already in place as of 1 October last year and from so as of October last year and as of 1 October this year the framework for negotiating renting with pets change of reasons to ending a tenancy and as of 1 September the minimum housing standards uh, for all, all new tenancies is next year and also for all tenancies the following year so 1 September 23 is minimum housing standards and for all tenancies from 1 September 24. As Mark mentioned, today's webinar is just focusing on today's topic, which is the ending of a tenancy. So the RTRA Act outlines the rules in how a tenancy or rooming accommodation agreement can end. The timeframes will apply and um, will vary due to the reasons to end the tenancy. And whether the agreement is for general tenancies, such as your houses, 
<clears throat> excuse me, units or your townhouses, or it could be for movable dwellings in a caravan park or for roomy accommodations, such as your boarding houses, your student purpose-built accommodation or supported accommodation. So a property manager or owner can end the agreement by issuing a notice to leave. A tenant can issue a notice of their intention to leave. The tribunal will, may make an order. It could also be that there's mutual agreement to end the tenancy, where both the owner and the tenant agree in writing. Other reasons also include abandonment, and issuing an abandonment notice, death of a sole tenant, where the representatives of the tenant um, may end the agreement, and also too, you've got mortgagee in possession. The process is still applies. However, as of 1 October, we have new reasons to end the tenancy and also the timeframes for some of those reasons. So from 1 October, the without grounds provision has been removed and new reasons to end a tenancy have been added. These new grounds will apply for general tenancies and roomy accommodation. The new grounds includes ending of a fixed term agreement. So if you have a fixed term agreement coming to an end and you would like to end that agreement, then from 1 October, we also, you would actually, sorry, then from 1 October, you would issue a notice to leave on the grounds of the end of a fixed term agreement. That would require the two months notice. The other new grounds being introduced is the owner undertaking significant repair or renovations or demolition. There could be change of use. So when we talk about change of use, it could be changing a um, property from a permanent rental to maybe like a holiday or an Airbnb. The owner or their immediate relative is moving in, preparing the property to sell or the sale of a rental property. And these are all from the owner's or manager's point of view. There is a new section 297B, an application to terminate because of a serious breach under general tenancies. This includes illegal activity, intentional or recklessly destroying or damaging the property or endangering another person. This will allow the owner or the manager to apply to the tribunal for an application to terminate the tenancy. But this section also does state that the lessor may form a reasonable belief that the premises or property has been used for illegal activity, whether or not anyone has been convicted or found guilty of an offence in relation to that activity. So this section further um, links to section uh, 347A about a serious breach. And this is where a tribunal adjudicator would be looking at the relevant actions, damage, costs, recurrence or frequency, and any adverse effects to the person or any financial loss. This does exclude public or community housing. However, section 290A, notes to leave because of serious breach of public or community housing, still does apply. There is a new section, 290B, and this is a notice to leave for a state government program. So this would be a program administered by the state under an act, and it could be something like that the property is required because of an expansion of a highway or potentially like a train line. There is only one reason that has been removed from ending a periodic tenancy, and that is the without grounds provision. So periodic tenancy can still be ended by an owner or manager on the reasons that you see on your screen. So if there is a breach, then obviously following that breach process. The tribunal order, if an um, order comes from the tribunal to end the tenancy, and in addition is the new grounds to end. So these following reasons will include two months notice for general tenancies, and generally it's one month's notice for roomy accommodation with the exception of demolition or redevelopment. Significant repairs, renovation or demolition, change of use or the owner or their relative looking to move in, um, preparing the property to sell or the sale of the rental property. And we do recommend for owners and managers um, to have some documentation for transparency or evidence to support your reasons. So in other words, it could be um, if you are looking to sell, a copy of your sales agent appointment, um, if you have a relative moving in, a written statement, or if you are doing renovations um, or repairs, maybe a trades quote. Amendment has also been made to repeated breaches section. So this will now include that if there is a repeated breach of a body corporate bylaw 
or for caravan park managers if there's a repeated breach of a park rule. For rooming accommodation, it's also added if there's been a breach by a resident for body corporate bylaws, if they are applicable, or also repeated breaches of house rules. So this section follows what was already in place in relation to repeated breach process. So that still continues. It just now has added if there is a repeated breach of those bylaws, park rules, or house rules. Additional grants has also been added for general tenancies and rooming, and this is in relation to tenants will have the ability to end a tenancy due to the property not being in good repair. The tenant will need to give notice in the first seven days when the tenant occupies the property. So as of 1 September 2023, this will also include if the property does not meet minimum housing standards. Currently, the legislation has, if a sole tenant passes away, the agreement can end. And this is not a lease break. So the new rules coming in as a one October is if a co-tenant passes away and it's not practical for the remaining tenants to continue or would cause them hardship, they can end the tenancy and give 14 days notice and no penalty. Again, it's not a lease break. If the premises are primarily used for to provide student accommodation and the resident stops being a student as what is outlined under the Act, they can give a notice of their intention to leave. And likewise too, if the student accommodation provider is providing accommodation for the purpose of students, they can also give a notice to the resident if the resident is no longer a student as well. The other reasons that tenant can end is if the owner does fail to comply with repair orders, they can also give notice. And remember too, a tenant experiencing domestic and family violence can also end their interest in the tenancy and leave the rental property. Other sections added in include the tenant applying to the tribunal to terminate due to misrepresentation by the owner or their managing agent regarding the rental property or its inclusions. The tenant will need to apply within three months of the tenant occupying the property. This is a non-urgent application and needs to come through the RTA's dispute resolution process first. There is also a new section 246A regarding the tenant taking action or applying to the tribunal if the tenant reasonably believes that the action taken by the owner in giving them a notice to remedy breach, increasing the rent or ending the tenancy, or refusing to enter into another fixed term agreement is due to the tenant upholding their rights in requesting a repair or requesting reimbursement for emergency repairs or applying for a tribunal order. This section also does state that the tenant may apply to the tribunal for an order to set aside the lessor's action if the tenant reasonably believes the action um, was taken to intimidate or punish the tenant for a matter mentioned in subsection 1A, which is regarding the tenant taking action to enforce their rights, such as, as I said, issuing a breach, requesting repairs or the emergency repairs or applying to the tribunal or complying and complaining to an authority. The application must be made within one month of the lessor's action. And this also does apply for rooming accommodation as well. So just a caution here, there are penalty provisions applying for um, up to 50 penalty units for providing false and misleading information in a notice requiring a tenant to leave. This again um, is for rooming, rooming accommodation providers and agents and landlords. So an owner needs to ensure that when they do issue a tenancy, uh, due to issue a notice to end a tenancy, due to the sale contract, significant repairs, redevelopment, um, demolition, change of use or the owner or their relative moving back in, that it is true and correct and not used as a way to end a tenancy. If you are an owner or an agent and have ended the, the agreement because of an owner or their relative moving in, change of use or sale of the rental property, you cannot offer a tenancy for the premises for six months after handover date of the vacating tenant. It would be to the owner to provide reasonable evidence as to why this did not occur if there was an investigation. So just to keep in mind too, uh, the not reletting of the premises for six months after the tenancy for these reasons also do apply for rooming accommodation, except the owner moving in. 
Um, to clarify these sections, the change of use, the again, the lessor would need to provi prove that the change of use did not happen for the reasons beyond the lessor's control. For a property being sold, the lessor genuinely made the premises available for sale, but no offer, um, offers acceptable were received, or the lessor entered into a contract for sale, but the contract ended without the premises being sold. And for owner occupation, the lessor would need to prove the intended occupants. That means that the owner or their relative need to occupy the premises ended and una or unable to occupy the property. The lessor did not offer a tenancy until after the intended occupants need ended the sorry needs ended or become unable to occupy, and the premises remained vacant between the tenant vacating the property and also the offer of the occupants being accepted. So I know that was a little bit um, a wording there, but that's literally what was also in the legislation. So with the new amendments, they will apply to room accommodation, as I mentioned before, but the owner moving back in and also um, the owner moving back in does not apply. So for any accommodation that is purpose built for student accommodation only, the new reasons to end a tenancy if the resident is no longer a student and needs to leave, they can provide one month's notice and leave. And likewise, if the provider is providing accommodation primarily for students and the resident stops being a student, again, it's also one month's notice. With these sections, a student means a person enrolled in a course under the Social Security Act 1991, so it's Commonwealth Act, and is an approved course of education or study for this section. All right, Lynn, thanks very much for running through that information. What we might do now is have a look at a couple of scenarios. So if Peter is a landlord and he has a rental property close to the university currently rented to Sarah and Jane, his son is now enrolled at the university and Peter is now wanting to end the tenancy for his son to move in. What does Peter need to know and understand first and how does Peter end the tenancy? So with this particular scenario, what we're looking at is that Peter being the owner needs to understand what agreement is in place to start with. Is it a fixed term agreement or is it a periodic agreement? If it is a fixed term agreement, it is still in place until the end of that term. And if it is a periodic agreement, then obviously Peter currently can obviously give two months notice um, to end the tenancy. As of 1 October, he would also be able to um, give that notice as well, but it would be um, for the fact of that the owner is looking to have a relative move back into the property. So we would also recommend that Peter have you know, the evidence for transparency for his obviously his son moving into the property. Okay, so considering that you mentioned before, if a, an owner uh, does end a tenancy uh, for moving in themselves or putting a relative in, you can't relet for six months. If yeah. Peter's son then decides that university is not for him or he finds a job somewhere else or doesn't end up you know, staying in the property, what's Peter's uh, options in that situation? Yeah, you're right, Mark. That six-month time frame does come into play. However... Uh, if there was a complaint made to the RTA, then Peter would need to demonstrate the obviously the intention and the reasons behind, you know, that the intention was there for his son to be moving in and everything was on track for that, um, and obviously to the reasons behind the change. So again, this comes down to that evidence for transparency. Excellent. Thanks for that. So another situation. John, who's the landlord, and Amy, his tenant, have a fixed term agreement in place until the 17th of December, 2022. John is looking to end the tenancy. John is going to be doing some renovations to freshen up the property, and he's thinking eventually of turning the property into a holiday let. When does John need to give notice, and for what reason? Okay, so John being the landlord, um, he's got the fixed term up until the 17th of December. Currently, he could give notice without grounds um, to be looking to end that agreement. However, after 1 October, he can look to end that agreement and give the two months notice. Um, and that would be on the reason because it's the end of a fixed term. But if for reason, and we've got here the same scenario, if Amy was on a periodic lease, and this is where the new reasons would come into play. 
So if John ended due to renovations, um, he can do so. Um, however, if he did decide to relet after that and change his mind in not um, putting the property on the holiday rent market, he could um, relet the property. But if he is on a periodic, if it's on a periodic and he's ending because he's turning it into a holiday let, then this would be a change of use. So this would then mean that John could not put the property back on to relet if he did change his mind um, for that six month period after Amy had left. Okay, so the renovation aspect of things doesn't have the six month application or requirement, but the change of use does. Excellent. Yeah. Right. So with the six month time frame, we're looking at the change of use, an owner or a relative moving in. Um, so those sort of, um, and the sale of a property, those three terms uh, have got that six month time frame that's applicable. Excellent. All right. So Jeff and Mary have been renting from Rod for the last past three years. They started on a six month fixed term agreement and remained in the property on a periodic tenancy. During this time, they have had a couple of rent increases. Rod, the landlord, uses Natasha, the property manager, to look after the property. Rod is very happy with Jeff and Mary as tenants and is considering what his options are with future leases. Rod also wants to increase the rent. So what are his options at this point? Um, so Rod's got a few options here. Um, obviously, to understand the difference between the two types, of agreements, whether Rod is happy for Jeff and Mary to continue on on a periodic tenancy. If he does want to increase the rent, there's some rules in place in relation to rent increases, and that would be um, making sure that it's been six months since the last increase, and he would also have to give two months notice for that rent increase. He could also offer Jeff and Mary a new fixed term agreement, and on that agreement, providing again six months has passed since the last increase, um, he could offer the rent increase on that new agreement and ask Mary and Jeff if they'd like to sign that and return it by whatever date. Um, I suppose the main thing for Rod really would be going and having a conversation with Jeff and Mary and talking through the options of what might be Jeff and Mary's um, situation. Are they looking to stay for a significant period of time down the track because they've obviously been a long-term tenant? Um, are they looking to change their situation in the near future? So again, really good communication between the two parties and understanding the different types of those two agreements being on offer. Whether it is for a fixed term, that way then obviously knowing Rod, Jeff and Mary would all then know um, how long that term of that tenancy is for, um, or whether if they do stay on a periodic agreement, right understanding the reasons and how the agreement can end down the track and likewise for Jeff and Mary. So in effect, if they are a periodic tenant after the 1st of October, Rod's options are then limited to the four ways to end that agreement. Is that? Yeah, after 1 October for the periodic agreements, um, yes, we've got those new reasons to end. If Rod is looking to talk with Jeff and Mary now um, and changes his mind for some other reason, he thinks, oh, you know what, I might be doing something else with the property, then currently at the time of this recording, he could give the two months notice without grounds. But as of 1 October, the new reasons to um, end a tenancy would come into play. Excellent. All right. So Meg and Frank rent a property. They've both signed the lease. They're three months into a 12 month lease and Frank suddenly passes away. Meg is concerned she will not be able to stay. What are her options in this situation? Again, for Meg, it's probably understanding what, well, finding out what are her concerns. Can she financially afford the property and continue through with the tenancy? Does she need to look at getting maybe a, um, a new flat made in to help financially and obviously talking with the owner to get approval for that? Again, it comes back down to Mary's obviously um, concerns in the situation. However, but if Meg does need to leave, um, because obviously hardship and she can't financially afford it and doesn't want to stay in the property, then with the new rules as of 1 October, she could end the tenancy due to the co-tenant passing. Okay. So Simon has agreed to rent a unit from Max. Max has advised that he will install air conditioning in the main bedroom and also repaint the bathroom within the first two weeks of Simon moving in. Simon signs the agreement on these conditions. Now Simon says 
that Max is not returning his calls and has not done these things, and it is now two months into the tenancy. What options did Simon have? And Simon's probably got a few options here. Obviously, you know, the RTA has always recommended self-resolution in having owners and tenants and managing agents talk with each other if there's issues and try and resolve the matter. Um, Simon could issue Max with a breach. Um, he could apply to our dispute resolution service to get assistance. But with the new laws as of 1 October, Simon can also apply to the tribunal for misrepresentation. So that could be in relation to the fact that Max has mis misrepresented on the fact that he is going to put the air conditioning and he was going to do, redo those painting for the property. So with the misrepresentation um, new section, Simon does need to come through the RTA's dispute resolution service first um, to get a notice of unresolved dispute if it's not resolved before going on to the tribunal. The main thing that Simon needs to probably understand in this situation is that if he is looking to take action, he needs to do that misrepresentation action within the first three months of moving in. All right. Okay, so just a reminder, um, and thanks for that, Lynn, and for those explanations. Just a reminder that the process for ending a tenancy due to the breach notice not being rectified has not changed. So if uh, in the current situation up until the 1st of October, we're all aware of how that breach process works. Come the 1st of October and when we're working under the new uh, changes, the breach process hasn't changed at all. So we're still in a situation where uh, a periodic tenant, for example, although it falls under those new four ways of ending a tenancy, you'll still have the option to uh, issue a breach. And if the tenant doesn't rectify the breach, then they can still be issued the notice to leave. So none of that has changed. So remember that the reasons to end tenancy are outlined in the, new, in the legislation and the new grounds to end a tenancy replace the without grounds reasons from the 1st of October. And of course, timeframes all still apply to end tenancies. Okay, as I mentioned before, with resolving disputes, we do recommend property managers and owners and tenants respectfully speak with each other to resolve any tenancy issues and try and work together to find a solution. Now, communication is key to resolving most disputes. So remember, respect, empathy, negotiations, and exploring all the options if you can. If you are unable to resolve the issue, the RTA's free dispute resolution service is available to help you and the other party try and resolve that matter. The RTA does resolve over 70% of disputes where parties participate in the telephone conferencing. It's a voluntary process, so we cannot force parties to participate, and although we do encourage it. Um, the conciliator is impartial. They're not there to take sides nor make decisions. The parties to the dispute own the dispute outcome, and it is a confidential process. So we do have information on the RTA's website um, in relation to our dispute resolution service, along with tips in resolving disputes. So just clarifying in relation to applying to the tribunal, which is the Queensland Civil and Administrative Tribunal, it's just a reminder too that there are urgent and non-urgent applications under our legislation and timeframes apply in relation to applying to the tribunal. So for non-urgent matters, it does require a notice of unresolved dispute first from the RTA before proceeding to the tribunal. With QCAT, um, so with an urgent application, uh, the urgent applications are defined under section 415. So if you don't see the reason to apply for being urgent and where you can go directly to QCAT, then you need to then, it would be a non-urgent matter and you need to apply to the tribunal. There's information on the QCATS website in relation to the applications, your timeframes, your fees and everything. So that's QCAT website, qcat.qld.gov.au. Just to let you know, QCAT is currently looking at releasing an online portal uh, for tenancy applications in the near future, as well as they will continue to accept the paper forms. Remember, going off to QCAT is all about the evidence. So it's really important that you do have the information you require, copies of your tenancy paperwork, any notices or forms, photos or evidence that's going to help support your case. QCAT is self-representation and more information can be found on their website. 
Yeah, now, it is going to, oh, sorry. I was just going to say, Lynn, sorry, it appears that we uh, had some issues with the chat function. I think it is now working. So if people want to pop their questions in, um, please try that chat again and, uh, and see how you go. Thank you. Oh, awesome. Thanks, Mark. I didn't realise we had an issue there. Sorry, thank you. So we will be providing more information and education on the changes. So all our forms and our publications will be updated as of 1 October. And we will also have education available through other resources on our website, such as webinars like today. Um, we'll also be releasing podcasts, videos and fact sheets. And also too, if you are subscribed to our e-news, um, just make sure that um, you are or your colleagues are and we can let you know more information as well through that channel. We are also working with our key stakeholder groups. So that would be like the Real Estate Institute of Queensland, the Property Owners Association, Tenants Queensland, Q Shelter and Arama and quite a few others. The webinar series on the tenancy changes will also include topics of renting with pets, repair orders and other amendments. So the invitations to these webinars will be available soon. And a copy of today's recording will be available on the RTA's website over the coming week. So over to you, Mark. I know that I can just see my screen just flying up there in relation to a whole pile of questions. And I'm sorry that we've actually had a slight problem with our chat, but it looks like everything's all coming through now. They certainly are, Lynn. So just to start, um... The first question, if we have tenants on periodic leases, now that we have to issue, uh, sorry, if we have tenants on periodic leases now that we have to issue a, without grounds notice to leave, how do we facilitate this? We've seen media and tenancy organisations reaching out to tenants that have experienced a fixed term agreement with a notice to leave, saying this is not the correct course of action. So I think this is in relation to uh, some of the media we've seen around fixed term agreements and notice to leaves being issued together. Okay, so and I think there's quite a few questions just having a quick scan at that. So we'll just quickly address this um, situation for everyone. Um, so just to summarise that what we think um, that question is about is the fact of signing up a new lease um, and with the notice to, um, I think the question's from Amber, the notice to leave at the same time. Whilst it's it's not unlawful as such, um, obviously it's probably not necessarily in the spirit of the policy behind the legislation changes. So um, the changes have come in. Obviously, it's it's more about having the the tenure of tenancy as such. Um, but as I said, uh, we are hearing a, quite a lot um, in the media and everything about that particular process. And as I said. You know, the legislation outlines the timeframes required to end a tenancy, um, but yes, it's probably not necessarily in the spirit of probably why um, the legislation was changed. All right. Thank so, you, Amber. Hmm. And everyone else who has asked very similar questions. Similar questions. Uh, Lynn, can a fixed term agreement be ended early for an owner to move in? Uh, thanks, Paul, for your question. Um, a fixed term is a fixed term and obviously if an owner does want to move in during that time, they're probably going to have to have a conversation with the tenant and maybe look to mutually agree to end that tenancy if the tenant does agree. Otherwise, the other option would be that the owner, if they're in a hardship situation, could potentially apply to the tribunal um, and seek a termination order that way. There could be um, compensation um, that could be involved in that as well. All right. Uh, at the end of a fixed term, do we need a new written lease or can we agree in writing to an extension of the term to say two years? Um, you can actually amend or put in an extra um, to, or an extra notice, I suppose, to change the end date of that fixed um, term agreement. Um, or alternative, you can enter into a whole new agreement as well. All right, and quickly, I'm a landlord. When the fixed term lease ends, can I increase the rent for the new fixed term lease? And what is the required notice period? Yeah, thanks, uh, Jane, for the question. Um, you can offer a new fixed term agreement with a rent increase, um, and that's fine. Um, just make sure that obviously it's been that six month time frame since the last increase. Um, the other thing too is that um, if the tenant doesn't sign that new fixed term, 
then and they do lapse into a periodic, you would have to give them the two months notice in writing, but you can offer a new fixed term with a rent increase. Mark, I am conscious of time and I know that we've got a lot here, so hopefully you've been able to summarise a few. Um, they look like they're very similar as well. Yeah, so uh, got a question here. Can I issue a notice to leave without grounds, which expires after the 1st of October? Is this still valid? I think this is probably in regards to the transition periods. Uh, sorry, I I'm, I'm got lost in the little clause there. So All right. Can I issue a notice to leave without grounds, which does expire after the 1st of October? So I think Apparently you can issue a notice to leave without grounds now, but obviously the new reasons to end a tenancy will come into place as of 1 October. Yeah, but if the if a tenancy ends prior to the 1st of October, then we can issue that notice uh, at this point in time. Yes. And as long as you're providing your minimum um, of two months notice. Yeah, and there's, uh, there's some there's some issues obviously in relation to some timeframes and transitional arrangements at the moment. And can I just let you know that the RTA will be early next week releasing um, a Q and A fact sheet in relation to the transitional arrangements and the timeframes and things like that. So please do jump on our website next week. We will actually have some more information available for everybody. Uh, and just talking about those transitional arrangements, please confirm a Form 18A executed prior to the 1st of October is automatically covered by the new legislation. Or does Correct. this apply to form? Yeah, so um, come the 1st of October, uh, regardless of when the tenancy agreement started, um, those new laws will apply in regards to effectively what we're talking about today, ending the tenancy. Uh, just scrolling through, there are a lot of questions here, as you said. Um, so just confirming it will still be permitted to end a fixed term lease by giving two months notice minimum and for the reason solely let the fixed term lease has ended. Yes, that is correct, Sandra. Uh, so in relation to that, the without grounds has been removed to end a fixed term agreement and has effectively been replaced by ending of a fixed term agreement. So. Um, Clarification in relation to an application to a tribunal for misrepresentation is the three month time frame from the date of moving in or the date of lease commencement? Um, I think you find it actually is from the, uh, it does say from the uh, three months from occupancy, I think you find in the legislation, but we can probably come back and clarify that with you, Monica. There will be um, some, as I said before, some fact sheets, but we also will have some quick guides also available on our website over the coming weeks as well. I think it says from occupancy. Mark, I know that we, we are already over time. So um, look, thank you everyone for your questions. As I said, I think what we are seeing is some themes that's coming through. Quite a few people, um, Pam, Ashley, David, Rebecca, um, you're all asking very similar sort of same questions in relation to uh, the time frames and things like that, as well as the issuing of a notice to leave uh, at the same time as signing a lease. So rest assured that as of early next week, there is going to be um, that information on our website just to put some clarification around those questions for you. Okay, we might have to All leave right. there, Mark. I'm just conscious of time. Yeah, and I appreciate that. With the slight delay that we've had with the yep. um, chat coming through as well. All right, so as Lynn mentioned, uh, there will be a lot of education uh, and information available. Please make sure that you've signed up for our monthly RTA News email so we can keep you informed of any key topics or changes. Podcasts on the new tenancy changes will also be released along with upcoming webinars, and we will be... Uh, running more of these webinars on different topics as we go along. You can follow us on LinkedIn as well. Also, the website uh, is there for you and obviously our contact centre number and the contact centre is available from Monday to Friday, uh, 8.30 to 5pm, excluding public holidays. We do thank you very much for attending today's webinar and we look forward to seeing you in future webinars. We'll now close and a quick one-minute survey will be available for you to complete. Thanks very much for coming along.